Hi everyone, it's a beautiful, mysteriously eerie and misty morning on the foreshore. And the tide's on the way down. It's about another two hours until low tide. And so I'm going to go and see if the tide's going to leave anything out for us to find. But I'm really enjoying this lovely atmosphere being wrapped in a shroud of mist or fog like London of old. Look, I've just picked this up. And it looks as if at one point there would have been something on there because, well, there is something on there actually. Look, there's two little holes, one either end. And I can actually make out some lettering. P, there's a P there, I think. And what's that? Oh, how exciting. It's a shame there's a bit missing. wonder what that came from. It's very, very faint. But if I give that a little clean, a little rub when I get back, we're going to see some letters on there. I can definitely see a P. Ooh. Exciting. As I was picking it up, actually, <laughs> I just noticed a 303. Oh, is it still there or has it disappeared? Oh, there it is, look. There it is. It's a bit battered. I'll toss it into the river a little bit further. Woo. Now, just over there, I think I can see a lead toy. I'm not sure. It looks like a horse with maybe a soldier or somebody on the horse, or it could just be a piece of lead, I don't know. Let's go and take a look together. It's just down there. What do you think? Yep, I definitely think it's a lead toy. Let's go and have a look. And yes, it is. And guess what? Guess what? He still has his head. And actually, you can really see the detail in that lead. He still has his head, but the horse doesn't have his legs, unfortunately. But look, you can even see his face. He's got no arms either. It looks like a Native American, doesn't it? On a horse. How fantastic is that? I'm just loving that intricate detail. You can almost see a little expression on that person's face. I shall add him to my burgeoning collection of lead toys. Now down there, I've just seen something round. It looks hopeful. It might be nothing, but I'm hopeful. It's just down there. Can you see it? Just here. I haven't picked it up yet. We're going to find out what it is together. There it is. Now, what can that be? It looks like there is some lettering around the edges. Is it a badge? Oh, look, it's a, um, it's a pendant. Oh, that's exciting. It's a pendant. Now, what has it got around it? It looks like family something. Family something. Our something. 
Well, it's exciting. I'm looking forward to getting that home, looking at it underneath the magnifying glass. You might be able to see what it is already. I can't. What a fab find! And over there, I can see a spoon. It would be great if it had something marked on it. It might not. Actually, I can see the handle of another piece of cutlery there as well. Okay, so there's the spoon that I've just seen, just here. And look, there's one there, two. And, oh, look, there's a coin. Might be a modern one. Um, oh, what should I look at first? Okay, let's look at what I saw first, which is here, which is this spoon. Which looks relatively modern, doesn't it? It doesn't have any markings on it. It's probably stainless steel. Um, let's take a look at this one. Look, there's a handle just there. Let's move that. Oh, look, this one looks slightly nicer. It's a really tiny spoon. It's like a sugar spoon or a salt spoon or something. Oh, I like that. Now that is a lot cuter and that could even be silver. I'll give it a wash in a minute. What's that got on the back there? Yeah, that could be a silver spoon. Um, let's give it a little rinse now. Why wait? Here we go. And now, now, let's see if this is a, a coin. Put my two spoons up there. It could be a modern coin. I don't recognise it though. Do you recognise that? Ah, what's that? Belgique. Okay, it's a Belgian coin. Belgique. And we will have to look at the year of it later on because I can't see it. Excellent. Ooh, let's take a, a little look around this area quite fruitful. What's this? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I've, I've hit a little sweet spot here. Look, that looks like it could be an earring or something. Oh yeah, look. It was something once upon a time. It's got no stones left in it. Well and truly stuck. Yeah, a little button gleaming under that mud. Let me move. It's a little bit comfortable. This is when I'm very, very glad that I've got knee pads on. Oh, look. Look down there. See him. It's a soldier. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, would he by any kind of miracle have a head? Let's let's hope. No, he doesn't. Oh what a shame. It's a soldier carrying something, but as usual, he has no head. Oh, that's too bad. I'm just having a look in this area here. 
I haven't been here for a while. There's been a few heavy rainfalls and so it's looking nice and clean. Um, I've just picked up this piece of metal here. It looks really curious. Now what does that come from? It looks, well, when I first picked it up I thought it could be part of a, a clock face, but I'm not sure. What do you think that comes from? Have you got any ideas? I'll take it home and clean it up. I might use it in a picture in some kind of artwork. It's rather curious, isn't it? Well, this is definitely an area for cutlery. I can see what looks like the end of a knife. Just down here, look. Just a look. Can you see it there? Let's get that out. Oh yeah, looks like part of a cheese knife. Oh, it's actually got something on it there. Oh, a nice little design, look. Oh, and look, it very helpfully says cheese knife. So I was right all along. It is indeed a cheese knife. Look at that. I could put a little handle on it and use it again as a cheese knife. Nothing like a little bit of cheese and some crackers. Guess what? Just over here, by some small miracle, I've just seen a ring. It's just down here. Seriously, it's so fortunate that I spotted it. I haven't taken it out yet. Can you see it just down there? Look at that! It's a ring. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's so beautiful. Oh my gosh. That is a beautiful, beautiful ring. Isn't it gorgeous? It's really delicate. And there's a stone. Now, is that diamond? Oh my God. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, how beautiful is that? Simon's got a diamond testing kit. I'm going to see him actually very shortly. I'm going to take that with me and ask him if he can test it. Oh my goodness, look at it. I wonder how old it is. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. But what is its story? How did it get here? Why is it on the Thames foreshore? Who wore it? Who wore it? Who wore it? And did they lose it or did they throw it away? Well, watch this space. We'll see if it's a diamond. Well, that was a turn up for the books. I'm really excited about that. It's always really special finding something like that, so small, so delicate, so precious. Look, nice bit of pipe stem. I've put it safely in my pouch so that I don't lose it again before I get home. Sometimes it's pure luck, you know, your eye just catches something, catches sight of something, just quite by chance. And that was definitely the case there.
Now down here there's what looks in the first instance to be a shapeless piece of lead but I think it's a toy aeroplane. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to mend it or if one of the wings is missing. No I don't think so actually. See there's one wing there and there's another wing here which is bent to the side. I think unless I'm seeing things that that is a lead aeroplane. So we can find out when I get back and I'll see if I can bend it back into shape without breaking it. Some child's lead toy from yesteryear. Look, just down there, there's the tantalising end of a pipe. A pipe stem poking out of that there mud. Now, I'm kind of hopeful because when I'm pulling on it, nothing is coming out, which indicates that there must surely be a bowl on the end. So, let's see if my hunch is right. Yeah, there's definitely something. Unless there's something underneath there holding onto the other end of the pipe stem. Right. Oh yeah, there's definitely a ball. Definitely a ball. Now, what's it going to be? A plain ball? A decorated ball? What a satisfying feeling. Now, it's a plain pipe bowl and that dates from around 1840 to 1860. There's that lovely seam of leaves going up the front there which would cover up the mould. And there is a little maker's mark there on the heel. And you see the colour there, it's grey, black. Well, that will fade to the same colour as the end of the pipe bowl once it's been out of the mud for a while. So there we are. And as usual, I'll leave the mud in there because when it dries, you never know, we might find some tobacco at the bottom. Hello. <laughs> Hello! I'm hoping I've got some food. Oh, I've also seen a bit of bottle poking out there. Dare I hope that it might be intact? Oh, I don't know, I don't know. Look, there's a bit of raised lettering on it. Okay, let's go see. Oh, is there any chance that it might be intact? Is there any chance. Oh please, please. I mean it might be modern. Oh look, it's looking hopeful. It's looking hopeful everyone. What is it? Oh, 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 oh. That's lovely. Holbrook and Co. Look at that gorgeous bottle. It's just such a nice colour. And can you believe that it's just sitting here, not broken, after all these years? Wow. Holbrook & Co. Pickles or something, or some kind of sauce. Oh, that's nice. I thought it might have a cork in it, but I think it's just mud. But that's going to be a beautiful colour when I've washed it and emptied the mud out. It looks like there's a nice bit of stoneware here under this mud which is being uncovered and we might be lucky enough to have the name of a an inn or a tavern on there. Let me see if I can get it out. Oh my goodness, it's quite, it's quite heavily embedded. Let's see if we can get this out. It looks really nice actually. 
I mean it's definitely broken but if we're lucky enough to have enough name on there to be able to find out where it was then it doesn't matter if it's broken okay here we are I've got my gloves I had to dig something out of the mud the other day and I didn't have my gloves and I've got to admit I'm not a big fan of getting up to my elbows in mud at all even though I know I'm a bit um, lapse at wearing gloves okay look oh this is looking good the tide's on the way in though so <laughs> I literally am on a race against the tide you can see a neck there it's looking really good okay success look got it out sadly broken but let's see if there's any any more in there no there isn't but 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 the good news is we are going to have a name on there and as you know probably um, I do love a good name let's go and rinse it off see what we've got on there okay let's get the mud off my trowel first oh dear <laughs> covered in mud now bound to happen okay let's go down to the rivers of the Thames to the rivers of the Thames and clean it off ah it's typical isn't it it's broken right at the front where the name actually is but we probably have oh look this is brilliant this is absolutely brilliant because we've got everything we need <laughs> it's G Todd Grocer Greenwich I've got all the information I need to look up this bottle to look up Mr Todd G Todd Grocer of Greenwich wow that is brilliant what a great find that is what a great find that is my favorite kind of find I wonder what G Todd was like well you know I'm assuming it's a man it could be a woman Gertrude Todd George Todd Georgina Todd Giselda Todd one thing's for sure, I'm going to find out. Hi everyone, thank you very much for watching. Welcome to my studio. I hope that wherever you are, and whatever time of the day, week, month it is, that you are in good spirits and in good health. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that little excursion along the Thames foreshore. And let's face it. Sometimes the River Thames is a bit like a lucky dip or an unlucky dip, depending on how you want to look at it. But one thing is for sure, you're always going to come home with some real treasures. And sometimes those treasures are more about the stories behind the objects. And never underestimate the power of something broken to take you down a fascinating rabbit hole. Now, it just so happens that somebody related to the grocer on this stoneware flagon planned and built the first telegraph line across Australia and I'm going to tell you all about that now I'm surrounded here by the objects which featured in today's video quite a strange little eclectic mix and I think to be honest with you that this is one of the most interesting things despite the fact that it is now very broken so let me tell you all about what I found out from researching the name on this flagon, G. Todd, Grocer, Greenwich. Griffith Todd, also referred to as George, moved to Greenwich in 1831 to expand his grocery business. The grocery was in Church Street, Greenwich, and he was known as a grocer and tea merchant. We can see him here in the 1841 Greenwich census with his wife Mary and four of his five children. Here's a close-up, you can see Griffith Todd, grocer. 
Unfortunately, in 1841, there was a huge high tide on the Thames which flooded Greenwich. Griffith Todd's grocer's shop was badly affected and this set them back considerably. Now, one of the reasons that Griffith moved his family to Greenwich was for the renowned educational establishments there, and this included the Royal Observatory. Griffith and his wife Mary were determined their children would not work behind a grocery counter like them. One of their sons, Charles, did very well at maths and gained the opportunity to enter the Royal Observatory, where he worked as a supernumerary computer. A boy computer, or a human calculator, if you like. Charles then went on to work as assistant astronomer at Cambridge University and was one of the earliest observers of the planet Neptune. In 1855, Charles married Alice Bell and that same year they moved to Australia, where Charles took up the post of astronomical and meteorological observer and head of the Electric Telegraph Department in South Australia. Charles Todd, also known as Telegraph Todd, was most celebrated for his achievement in planning and organising the construction of the Overland Telegraph Line from Adelaide to Darwin, linking Australia with the outside world. Alice Springs, by the way, is named after Charles's wife, Alice. Charles died in 1910. Who would have thought that an old broken flagon, once belonging to Griffith Todd, the grocer in Greenwich, would lead me to discover the remarkable achievements of his son, Charles. Now this to me is such a great example of how something broken can emerge from the mud, but with it comes a story and something to research and something to really enrich your knowledge. And I've said it so many times, but if it wasn't for some of my mudlarking finds, um, I really wouldn't have learned so much miscellaneous information uh, and historical facts and it was really great to discover the story of Griffith Todd and his family and how they moved to Greenwich and how his son Charles went on to achieve such remarkable things like laying a telegraph line across Australia and really revolutionising the communication between Australia and the rest of the world. So thank you very much for that. River Thames and it also seems that Charles Todd had quite a good sense of humour and he was very partial to a pun. Now his father Griffith Todd was a grocer, as you know, also he was known as a tea merchant. And whenever Charles was asked if he wanted a cup of tea, he used to say, oh yes, because without tea, I would be odd. So, very good. Not only was he a rather remarkable genius, but he was also a bit of a comedian. Now, if Griffith Todd's grocery shop was going on towards the later part of the 19th century, he may well have stopped this. This is Worcestershire sauce made by Holbrook and Co. And evidently very popular because I do find a lot of Holbrook glass bottle stoppers. I've got one here. Not so many bottles. I haven't found so many bottles. It's really nice to find this one in such a good condition. And it's nice to have a Holbrook & Co Worcestershire sauce bottle to go with one of my stoppers. So now I have the whole set. And I wonder if this was once on the shelves of Griffith Todd's grocery shop in Greenwich. It could have been. It could have been the same person who threw them both in the mud, the flagon and the Worcestershire sauce bottle. Who knows? We will never know, but it's always fun to imagine. Now, the next thing I'm going to talk to you about very briefly is this, because I don't have a whole lot to say about it. It's a very strange little um, pendant. It has the family club, um, our home, our kingdom, all the world over. And I can't find out anything about the family club. I did find an example of a pin or a pendant in better condition with the enamel still on it. Presumably, this probably had enamel on it too um, in, in when, it's, when it was in its better days. But as for any information about the club, I didn't find anything out. So if you know anything about the family club, please tell me or please enlighten us all because I'd love to know a bit more about it. 
and who might have worn it? And who were the family club? What did they do? Where did they go? Um, yeah, interesting, interesting times. A rather obscure find from the Thames, that one. So what about this very battered old uh, plaque here? Um, it does say something on it. It's so faint, it's like it's been engraved with a feather. And it actually says private. I imagine it must have been on the door of a boat. And I imagine that many people probably burst through the door because how on earth they would ever have read the private um, is beyond me because even when it was in a good condition, I can't imagine it was that legible. So I wonder what went on behind the door that this was on. No idea how old it is. It does look quite old. Now, that did not survive very well, the, um, the currents and the, the, the years and years of being subjected to the Thames tides, but some things survive remarkably well. And I've got my little collection of lead toys here, and the one which did survive quite well, well, apart from the fact that they've lost lots of legs and arms, but in terms of the detail on it, this Native American here is remarkably in very good condition, and I was really pleased to find when I got the mud off that there's still traces of the paint and you know the the actual details there are quite extraordinary considering it's being laying in the mud for such a long time I mean these are going to be Victorian or early 20th century it always makes me wonder you know who were the, the children that played with these toys reminders of childhood. Children of the past. Now I did manage to repair slightly, well it's not exactly ready to fly over the Atlantic just yet, but I did manage to bend back this aeroplane into a little bit more of an aeroplane-like shape. So that's looking pretty good, don't you think? I've got a few lead aeroplanes actually, several lead toys um, in varying um, conditions and many of them sadly like this soldier have got a head which is missing. Now I did find a fair amount of cutlery and over the years I found an extraordinary amount of cutlery, some of it a little more interesting than others. It's really interesting when it's got like a little mark on it so that you can see where it came from, some kind of old canteen or some of them are naval or military. In the case of the cutlery which featured on today's video, it's not that intrepidating I have to say. I think my favourite is this little sugar spoon or salt spoon here and it's not actually silver although it does look like it it's nickel silver um, it had made me though want to get out some of the other cutlery which I found over the years and have a look at it and I even pick up the ends of spoons and things like that sometimes um, for some reason because I think that I can use them in a piece of art and I just picked up this the other day as I was cleaning up the spoons and the cheese knife, by the way, which is here. I've made it a little more legible. It did actually break, the, the end broke off, but there you are, you can see cheese knife there. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, I picked up this end of spoon quite a long time ago and I was going through my studio um, just the other day as I was preparing to do this roundup and I almost threw this away because I thought, oh come on Nicola, you don't need to keep that. But then I looked a little closer at it and I was delighted to see that somebody has etched a little star on there. So somebody's doodled on the top of this spoon or fork. There is a marking on the back here. Again, I'm going to put a photograph up and if anybody recognises it, um, I'd be really grateful for some more information, but I was just so pleased to see this little personal touch etched into the top of this spoon. I thought I'd share that with you. <laughs> what have I got now? I've got this little Belgian coin from 1934, Bon pour un franc. And 
I have here this rather beautiful ring. It's lovely, isn't it? It's a little bit bent out of shape. Uh, it's quite sweet. It's got these little hearts just there on the side. Now, I was going to tell you whether or not it's a diamond, because the day after that outing, I met up with my mud buddy, SciFinds, and he brought his diamond testing kit along. And I was going to show you that, but I think this video is going to be way too long if I do that, because we have to do the results of the trowel and the pipe winning contest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a separate video all about our metal detecting outing. And at the end of that video, you'll be able to find out if this ring is indeed a diamond ring or not. But in the meantime, put your thoughts in the comments below. What do you think? Is it a diamond or not? What do you think? Have a guess in the comments below. So I think I've been through everything there. And so now we are going to find out who has won the beautiful handmade trowel, similar to this one, made by my friend Graham Anderson, and also three pipes, um, which were found by Corinne Gilson, a Thames mudlark. Now I'm using Comment Picker website here, which helps you to do these giveaways in a fair way. It gives everybody a good chance of winning. So I've put in the YouTube link here and then I'm going to go down here and filter the comment based on the hashtag which was to win the trowel which is Pipe Queen. And I'm not filtering duplicate users because many of you are wanting to try and win the pipe or the trowel. So as there are two separate hashtags, if I filter the duplicate users, everybody would be eliminated. And so that wouldn't be fair at all. So Pipe Queen, let's see. First of all, we get the YouTube comments. 434 people are in it to win it. Start the raffle and pick a random winner. Good luck, everybody. Who is gonna win the trowel? Oh my goodness, look at this. It is Wreck Diver. Wreck Diver, well done. I wasn't counting, but it seems to me that there were more than 10 pipes in the video. I think you are probably right. Happy birthday, when it comes down to it, there can only be one original pipe queen. And that title belongs to you, woo. <laughs> well, there are lots of pipe queens and pipe kings, but um, I must admit that, uh, yeah, I'm a pipe queen. But anyway, thank you very much. And Rec Diver, you have won yourself a beautiful handmade trowel. So please get in touch so that we can arrange to send it to you. Now, we're going to go back up here now and change the hashtag to Corinne Gilson. Now, Corinne. Gilson is the hashtag to win a clay pipe, and there are three clay pipes to use, so to win, sorry. <laughs> right, get YouTube comments. How many people want to win a clay pipe? 231 people want to win a clay pipe. Start the raffle and pick random winner. And the first winner is West Country Mudlarks. Well done, well done to West Country Mudlarks. Please get in touch, pick another winner. And we've got Christine Remem. Excellent, one of them is gonna to travel to Canada. Would love to win a pipe that was found by Corinne Gilson. Well, your wish has come true, Christine. And who is the third person going to be? And who do we have here? Patty Motes. I'm so amazed all of the things you extract from the mud of the Thames. Excellent, Patty. Well, you have won a pipe. And hey, guess what? You know what? I'm feeling really generous today. Let's have a fourth winner. If I'm a pipe queen, you know, pipe queens have got to be generous. So let's go and pick another winner. So for the bonus fourth winner 
We have got Big Axka, such a great video this week, a walk down memory lane, rest in love, Corinne Gilson. Excellent. For those of you that uh, didn't know, I can't remember if I said it just now, but Corinne sadly passed away earlier this year and so we are happy that some of her pipes are going to travel and give other people joy. Thank you very much for entering everybody and if you didn't win this time don't worry there will be other opportunities very soon I will be doing more giveaways so thank you for entering well done to the winners and get in touch via my website via the contact page so that I can arrange to send you your prizes. I hope to hear from you soon. So thank you to all of you who entered the competitions and well done again to the winners. I'm looking forward to hearing from you so that we can arrange to send your prizes to you, the trowel and the pipes. And don't worry if you didn't win this time, I will be doing more giveaways in the near future and so you will have another opportunity. So I think that's just about it from me. I'd like to give a huge shout out to you all for being so great and for being such a brilliant community. Thank you very much for all your comments and for the information which you take the time to send to me about some of my finds. I forgot to mention this strange little metallic object. If you know where that comes from, um, do let me know. And if you have any information you want to share about any of those finds, then please put in the comments below. I'm always absolutely delighted to hear from you. So I hope that you have a great week ahead and I'm looking forward to seeing you again very soon with some more absolutely amazing treasures from our lucky dip that is the River Thames. So see you soon. Bye bye. Griffiths Grocers Greenwich, 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 Griffiths Grocers